Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. As a lawyer, you will probably handle many different types of projects or matters. It can be useful to know which types of projects are the most profitable for you to pursue. One way of determining this is by using the IRR function within Excel to determine the internal rate of return on projects. The internal rate of return is simply a number that shows you the profitability of a project. The larger the IRR number, the more profitable the project. IRR finds this number by examining the flow of cash that you input into cells within an Excel worksheet. You can input a series of cash flows, money going in and out of your firm for a particular type of project, and then use the IRR function on those cash flows to determine the rate of return for the project. You will then be able to see which types of cases and projects tend to produce a higher IRR for your firm so that you can try to focus on pursuing those types of projects in the future. Note that the difference between the IRR and the XIRR function has to do with the time periods used to denote the cash flows that you input into the cells. If you record cash flows at a regular time interval, for example, the cash spent and received each month, then you can use the IRR function to determine your rate of return. If, however, you input cash flows that occur at irregular intervals, then you will need to also label the amounts entered with the associated date, and then use the XIRR function to determine the rate of return for the amounts entered. The number received as a result of either function is always shown as the rate at the end of the cash flow periods. Also note that expenses incurred, meaning cash going out, should be entered as a negative number, while cash received should be entered as a positive number. The formula syntax for the IRR function is equals IRR, open parenthesis, the range of values, comma, and optionally, the guess argument. For the XIRR function, it's equals XIRR, open parenthesis, the range of values, comma, the range of dates, comma, and optionally, the guess argument, then close parenthesis. Let's take a moment and look at the arguments for the formulas. For both formulas, the required values argument is the series of cash flow amounts. Payments or costs must be entered as negative numbers. The series must contain at least one positive and one negative number. If using the IRR function, the series of values is interpreted in the order in which they are entered. The dates argument, which is required for XIRR, is a schedule of dates that corresponds to the order of the cash flow entries. Dates should be entered using the date function as errors can occur when they are entered as text. For example, the 25th of May 2020 should be entered as equals date open parenthesis 2020 comma 5 comma 25 close parenthesis. All dates must correspond to a cash flow entry. No date can be earlier than the initially entered date. All dates must be valid. If there is an error with the date entry, the XIRR function will return the number error result. The final guess argument is optional. This is an optional guess that is close to the rate that you believe the IRR or XIRR function will return. If omitted, Excel assumes the argument to be 0.1 or 10%. Excel uses an iterative technique to calculate IRR. Starting with the guess argument, it will attempt to find a result that works until it is accurate within 0.00001%. If it cannot find an accurate result after 20 tries, it will return the number error. If you receive an error result or the result is obviously incorrect, try again with a different guess argument value. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.